It has been a while since we have added to our butterfly collection and I was already starting to get the itch to create another butterfly or a moth or just some sort of insect when I stumbled upon this. This is by the company Moth and Myth. Now Moth and Myth is a company that creates these vegan or cruelty-free specimens. You can see this one that has been, it's double-sided, which I love, and it has been laser cut out or maybe a cricket or some sort of tool to create this beautiful finish. So because of that, you can probably guess that I was absolutely ecstatic. I was thrilled when I saw that they had created a watercolor kit, and I knew I had to get it and share it with you guys today. What you get on the inside are nine yes nine different insects ready to be painted so this is on watercolor paper and they have been laser cut out and etched very softly in order to create the print of the butterfly which you can see an example of them underneath um, and to get you know the overall shape so some of these we have already done so like the monarch butterfly so this is what they provide for you. This is the monarch butterfly that we already created in a different tutorial. Um, I cut it out last night for you just to kind of show you kind of a side by side. Look at how fun and close these are. So if you were to get this collection, you would already have a good number of these butterflies. You'd already have a tutorial for. Um, and they're already cut out, they're ready to go. And I just love that this is available. Um, it feels like good quality paper. Um, good watercolor paper. This will be my first time painting on it and testing it out. So again, we've already done a couple of these. We've done the Monarch, obviously. We did a very similar butterfly to the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. So this is also a Tiger Swallowtail, although um, I think it's the African Tiger Swallowtail. So that is another one that we have already created. On the back here, you'll see there is a nice large Luna Moth um, that we have also already created. I believe that was my most recent tutorial. And then we will be creating one of these today. If you enjoy this and like this format, so you end up purchasing this, um, let me know in the comment section down below and I will make sure that we have a tutorial for every single one of these butterflies. I think that that would be a lot of fun. Um, if you're interested in that and if you'd like to see more butterflies on this channel, I'm planning to paint them all, probably, maybe not the Monarch, just because I've already done that. Um, but I'm excited to paint them all, see how they turn out, and just test this out. Um, I don't know, again, I don't know what kind of paper they use, and so this will be kind of a big trial and error. I'm really not sure what to expect, but I am super excited. I think I'm going to go with the Garden Tiger Moth today. So let me know if there's one particularly that you are excited about. I love the orange with the blue on here and kind of these fun, looks kind of like a giraffe print. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna look up some pictures of actual, this is just an illustration. I'm gonna look up some pictures of an actual garden tiger moth and we will get started. All right, we're zoomed in here just a touch. I will be using a new to me palette today. So it might take me a second to remember all of the color names because I'll have to look it up. I have my little cheat sheet with me. I am familiar with some of the colors in here, so I'm kind of already a little biased about some of them. We'll see how it goes. We might even add in some of this shimmer just for the fun of it. And then I will be using some of my um, Princeton Heritage brushes. I have officially converted. I still love the Princeton Neptune watercolor brushes, but for some of my detail work, I love the Princeton Heritage brushes. Um, I have a three and a six. I have a one that I ordered in the mail and it snapped. So I sent that back, <laughs> but I am really, really enjoying these. Six is kind of my go-to brush in general, but I really like the three if I'm working on smaller details. Um, so just in case I, you've heard me recommend the Princeton Neptune brushes and say those are my favorite, I still think that they're great. I really like them for looser styles, but for more detailed styles, I've been leaning towards the Heritage. It's just not quite as thirsty, doesn't hold quite as much water. Okay, so for these colors, um, let's play around a bit. I think I'm gonna be pulling out this warm brown, which is Burnt Umber. Um, if we need to, we'll probably add a little bit of whatever blue we're using just to kind of help deepen it. If you've been here a while, you know that I prefer to use warmer browns, um, but that's just kind of my general color palette. All right, I'm also gonna be using some of this orange. This is 
Pyrrole Orange. I don't know. I'll have it listed on the screen. I'm probably going to say some of these names wrong. Again, this is a new to me palette. Most of the colors are new to me. Some of them are not, um, but this one is new. And I will also be pulling in some quinacridone gold, I believe. That might brighten it a little too much, but I just, I like the idea of this being a slightly more golden tone instead of quite the fire bright orangey tone that we have. Um, another good one might be a cadmium orange, um, especially if you have like the darker hue um, that has a little bit of the red um, or like a burnt um, or a um, yellow ochre with uh, whatever red you have on hand, maybe a alizarin crimson. So that's what I'm planning to use for the orange bit. For the blue, I'm kind of leaning toward French ultramarine. I don't know, it's just been like my favorite blue lately. Um, it's a little trickier to work with, so we'll see how that goes, but I think those are the those, those are the colors that I'm gonna work with. Now for the fuzziness, there's already some texture on the paper itself, and I'm really not sure how the paint will react to this. Um, so we're just gonna kind of test it out slowly by slowly adding a little bit of pigment in. And I think, you know what? I think we're gonna add first, we have our Cronacridin Gold, which if you have Nickel Azo Yellow by Daniel Smith, or you could use like a transparent yellow, um, very similar. You could also use a lemon yellow or a Windsor lemon. Um, those are cooler tones, so it, but it would be kind of the same effect. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing a quick wash over this whole thing. Um, I'm going to go all the way down and I will be covering it with this brown in just a moment, but this will kind of give it a lit from within kind of glow. And I think that that will be really fun. Um, it looks like there's a little bit of red, if I'm looking at my reference images correctly, a little bit of like red or orange at the top there. Um, so I'll kind of leave some of that a little more blank, but we have our nice yellow on here. Next, I'm going to take them using my size three, so it's a fairly small brush. Now that that did not stay wet for very long, so I'm going to just jump in with, so it's a little wet, with this brown now. And I like that it's kind of allowing that yellow that's I painted first to be kind of the highlights. Look at that, that's so fun! Sorry, it might not have been as <laughs> Fun to warrant a squeaky voice. Oh, looks like I'm getting a little too excited. It, the body turns more to orange down here. So I'm gonna pick some of this up and take it down just to kind of allow it to be a little desaturated, but not quite as strong. Let's see if we can just add a little bit more to the very edges. This will help to give it a more 3D and lifelike appearance. Okay, I'm just gonna give that a little bit of time to dry and then we'll do another layer over top of it. Okay, I think I'm gonna jump in on this lower leaf, lower leaf, good heavens. <laughs> this, these are wings. This lower wing, a lower left hand side, and just do a quick wash of our orange. I think that that was a good mix for this color. Let's see, I'm just gonna go over that one. Carefully avoiding our little circles. Now this fringe here is a much lighter color, so I am going to avoid that for now. And I'm just deepening it where this top wing would naturally overlap and that will just kind of create a more three-dimensional effect and allow that to have a little bit of a shadow. So I might have to go in with a slightly desaturated tone, but at least for now, we're just going in with a deeper color, building this up a little bit and allowing this to be kind of a little softer as it flows out. I apologize if you can hear the lawn work outside. I've just, I've kind of given up on trying to avoid them. They're just always here. They're always at one of the neighbors and you know, I'm, I'm just ready to move on. So I'm going to add some of this yellow. So this is our quinacridin gold. 
Again, you could use a Windsor lemon or a trans, let's see, a lemon yellow hue, um, which I've used a lot, transparent yellow, I, just a pale yellow will work for this. Um, I think I'm gonna go in with, what is this red, Windsor red? Just a touch of this Windsor red. No, that's too purpley. Oh, maybe I'll mix it in. So I'm gonna mix it all in together. Um, just to deepen it a touch without losing some of that saturation. Again, I'm trying to create a little bit of a shadow here, just like a hint of a shadow. So dabbing off my brush. And then kind of blending that out so that it fades nicely. So I might need to build that up just a touch more again in a moment, but for now I'm pretty happy with it. I like how it's faded um, and has given it just a slightly different look. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So when I'm painting these, do you like to see the whole process of me doing it together or would you rather me say, okay, we're going to do the same thing to the other side and then just kind of skip ahead. Um, let me know. I'm happy to adjust. Obviously, it's faster to edit and upload if I only do one half, but if I'm going to be painting both halves anyway, um, I'm probably going to record it. So um, it would be very easy for me to include both. So if you prefer to have both sides, so like this, what I'm doing this time, where we're painting both halves together, um, going through all of the steps twice. I'm still talking a lot. Um, let me know down in the comment section and I will include it. Otherwise, um, I will assume that something that's a little bit shorter, a little faster would be preferable. Okay clean but damp brush and I'm just going to pull that over here and use that to kind of blend this area out. All right our body is very very similar so we're just going to the second the lower half of the body. So we're just going to continue with our orange tone. And that will blend in kind of a V shape right here. So I believe that this will only get so dark, just based on what I'm gathering with how the paper has been etched here, I don't think it's going to get quite as dark. Okay. All right, I'm going to allow that to dry completely before I start adding in the blue. And so we're going to move on to, let's do another quick layer on the outside of I'm going to go a little bit drier. So this is going to be a little bit more of like a dry brushing. Probably have brought the orange up to here, but I like it a little bit longer. Don't, I don't regret that. So yeah, it looks like normally, so if you want to be more accurate, you would bring the orange up to this V, but I don't have regrets if I'm honest. So really deepening out these sides. And then we'll do one more layer in a moment. Whoops, too wet. Oh, after this dries a little bit more again. Especially because I got it real wet. So especially because this piece is so petite, um, we'll be doing a lot of kind of back and forth. Okay, same brown. I'm going to take some of the wetter section. We're going to start filling in these spots, which should be pretty easy. I love how those edges make kind of a nice bordered outline. Oh, and just to clarify again, 
I am not affiliated with this company. I have personally used them. I am on their mailing list, which I'm not on many mailing lists. So the fact that I'm on their mailing list means I do like their product, um, but you know, like this isn't anything affiliated. I just thought you might like it. I thought, you know, I knew I was excited about it. Um, and I was just excited to show it to you. So hopefully you will find this fun. And if nothing else, you will have another painting tutorial. And this etched effect is actually a really good example of what happens to your paper when you overwork it. So overworked paper just eats the pigment um, and the water. And that's why it can be so difficult to work with once you've you know, made enough mistakes or erased enough on your paper or just you know, put your, rubbed your brush against it. Um, overworked paper can be really difficult to work on. And that's why, you know, that's why we practice. That's one of the reasons watercolor can be tricky. Um, but it's just, if you are dealing with this where it's like, wow, that spot is just eating the paint and I can't seem to get it to work. Um, it's probably just overworked paper. I had a painting recently where I had overworked the paper and nothing was settling correctly. So I had to just move on say goodbye to that piece and move on. It's just, it's part of art. Um, it can be used to your advantage like this, which is so fun. Um, but sometimes it's, it's annoying. We're done with the first half. Okay, let's move on to the second half. I'm gonna flip this over this way. I don't know why, that just feels comfortable right now. So I'm gonna go with it. Starting to get a little shaky, which means it's about lunchtime for me. But I think we can wrap this up before before then. Almost done with this little cutie. Just gotta put some cute little blue spots on you. And I was thinking the blue spots on the lower wings would need to be outlined very carefully. But I think seeing how this brown is responding with the etched area, I don't think we're gonna need to do that. I think it will probably just eat up the pigment and you'll just see it settle in there. I did intentionally overlap the orange just a touch onto the etched area um, in order to kind of encourage that darker color. So brown and orange are, or brown and orange, Blue and orange are complements. And so that will naturally create a more, whoop, a more desaturated, nice, dark value. So it looks like I'm gonna need to go over a couple of these just cause they're not as dark and rich as these ones. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick wash over this whole thing of our brown tone. Um, it'll be a little more dry. I don't want any paint to like be moving around and kind of reactivating some of this paint. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick, ooh, that got dark. So that must be etched pretty good. Quick run across. and see how just that little bit of playing around and darkening these edges and allowing this section to be just a little bit lighter, that gives it more of that three-dimensional look. So using gradients in that way is called modeling. Um, I do, if you've taken the shading course that I have, um, I'll have linked down below, um, then we talk about that a ton and we focus on it with drawing. But if you have trouble painting it, practicing drawing shadows and shading will help you tremendously. Um, it's the biggest way, in my opinion, that you can help learn more about proper shading um, for your painting is just being able to understand it, being able to see it a little more clearly. Um, it's just such a huge tool. All right, back to our orange mixture. I'm going to do just a quick kind of wash here. I might darken that a little bit. 
Um, I haven't quite decided, but I am definitely going to deepen this body section. I'm going to start on the outside and bring it in almost the entire way. But again, kind of like what we did with the body here, the upper part of the body, I am tr intentionally leaving some of this kind of bare. All right, more of our burnt umber. And if you do that layer that I just did dry, um, it'll be much, much easier and it won't um, fade as much. It'll dry very quickly. It won't run quite as much. I'm gonna do another layer here. I want this to kind of match the body. Um, I'm not really sure what it's necessarily supposed to be doing, but I can't get a really great picture of that. I think I'm gonna go over this with the red. I think that would be kind of a fun little pop. Add a little bit of variation in here because it's looking a little bit samey which happens more often than not in the animal kingdom. But um, here in my studio, I can have a little bit of artistic liberty and a little bit more play. So because it has that orange layer underneath it, it won't look completely out of place. It'll have that harmony, but that'll just give it a little bit of depth and that little bit of extra interest. So I'm just tapping a little bit more in while it dries. All right, let's move on to our blue. So we have our French ultramarine. And then I'm just going to do a quick layer in here. We might need to desaturate it, but we might just like the brightness. I think I need a little bit drier. See how it's kind of not covering on that spot at all? That's because the water kind of fell off that and just settled into the etched areas, which isn't a horrible thing, but isn't quite what I want to happen. Pull this down. Hmm, I don't love it yet, but maybe if we build up some of that color. I love this. I don't like that lighter area. Okay, so first layer done. I'm going to go in again with just one more layer just to see if that takes care of it. If it's still too bright for my fancy, we can go over it just a touch, probably mixing in with some French ultramarine, um, some of that orange, or we could even just do with the burnt umber, um, and do like a quick glaze, and that will help to tone it down a little bit, but I'm kind of hoping we can just keep this brightness and just let it be something a little different and unique. But we'll see. I thought maybe that red spot would be the balancing factor that we need, but it might not be quite enough. I'm seeing that I'm gonna to need to set my camera up a little bit differently next time so that you guys can have a nice close view. Sorry, occasionally I know I've pulled it away. But it helps me to see far away and up close. <laughs> and that's how I am able to kind of decide if the composition is working. Okay, let's see what to do for these antenna. It looks like they're white. So that could be a fun time, dipping my brush into some clean water I have off to the side. Let's use this shimmer. I have no idea what this is. 
Pearlescent White by Daniel Smith. Okay, I've never used anything like this, so we're gonna have some fun. Um, I'm just going to grace it across these fluttery, fun little antennae. And I might even, what if we did some blue at the base just to kind of pull that in again? Something looks off. My rule of thumb is try repeating it first. And if that doesn't work, get rid of both. So let's try, we've got our iridescent shimmery here. I don't even know if you can see that. It's kind of fun. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this blue, very watered down, just like a wash. And I'm just going to flick this at the top. Almost like a little bit of a shadow. I don't even know if you can see that. All right, back to our red. Bring this over across again. I think we are going to need to tone this down just a touch, this blue down. So I'm going to be careful because the ultramarine will pick up again if you go over it, the French ultramarine. So I'm going to carefully go across this entire piece. I'm a little surprised at how the um, orange color is fading. So another reason that I want to go over the entire piece. It just doesn't seem quite as strong and striking as it was when I first put it down, but maybe that's just compared to this blue now. Yep, I'm starting to pick up some of that blue, so more carefully. Should have been a little more dry probably. So our orange, our quinacridone yellow, and our red. Okay, that's working a little bit better. All right, and that is our finished. I'm gonna get him situated. That is our finished, for, nope, nope, just kidding. I'm taking a little bit of this burnt umber and the orange, and I'm gonna deepen this body just a little bit. I need it to go a little bit more in the background and just be differentiated a little bit more. So let's go through this. Alrighty. As always, I'm never done. <laughs> Might even, see, I'm, I'm never actually done. Repeating a little bit of the blue over here, just as like a fun, just tie-in. And pull it out just a touch on the edges. This is not accurate, but aesthetically, it makes me a little happier. All right, I feel like that pulls the piece together. <laughs> All right, now, this time, I'm actually done. I'm gonna put it away. This is our finished garden tiger moth. Have you seen one of these in your garden? All right, guys, I hope that you enjoy this. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, thank you for your feedback, for liking the videos and for sharing it with those that you think might enjoy it. I would love to hear which moth you wanna do next, moth or butterfly. Um, and if you get this kit, cause again, if a couple of you get this kit, um, I would be super motivated to complete the entire set soon um, so that we can paint it together. Uh, but if you're not really interested, I'll just paint it as I am excited about it and excited about each of the insects. I hope that you are having a wonderful, wonderful day. And until next time, happy painting.